are all of the must-see moments and things to know that occurred at AEW Full Gear and their media scrum. Kicking things off with MJF. Despite a stretch of time where it appeared he wouldn't be able to defend the AEW world title, MJF showed up and successfully defended the gold in the main event of Full Gear in a win over Jay White, all with the returning Adam Cole by his side. In a long match that focused on MJF's knee injury suffered earlier in the night, the champion picked up the win and possession of the belt that Jay White had previously stolen. This match marked his 10th title defense and his first singles match against Jay White, who is still looking for his first run with any AEW gold. MJF began the presser crying as he cut a promo saying his leg was busted and thanked Adam Cole. I just want you guys to know, when, I, when there is an option for guys in this company to phone it in, we don't do it. We don't do it. None of us do it. No matter how much our back's against the wall, no matter how much the crowd is seen, we all give it 110%. And that's what makes this locker room and that's what makes this roster so great. Moving on to Will Ospreay, who is now All Elite. It was announced during AEW Full Gear on Saturday that Will Ospreay had officially signed with the company. Ospreay came to the ring and said he would not begin immediately as he has spent eight years with New Japan Pro Wrestling and will finish his commitments there. However, he said he would start in time for AEW Revolution season, which normally takes place in the early spring. Right as Osprey was introduced, Tony Khan posted the All Elite graphic on X. Both Sports Illustrated and FIFO reported that Osprey's contract with the company is a multi-year deal. Saturday's show was not the first time Osprey has appeared for AEW, having wrestled on AEW television in the past. His highest profile match took place at All In back in August, where he defeated Chris Jericho. Will Osprey said that he signed with AEW because because it was the best decision for him and his family. He gets to be one of the best pro wrestlers that's ever done it and will test himself by being on weekly television. Jimmy Salcedo, Instinct oh. Culture. Will, congratulations. I want to start off by asking you what the decision-making process was like for you in choosing AEW and becoming All Elite. Uh, I've built up like a trust and a rapport with Tony. I feel um, I'm at my best over here and I just, I've enjoyed every time I've, I've come over here and right now this is just the best decision for me and my family. I'm not interrupting my kids' school, like my missus can see her parents, like this is, I get to be one of the best pro wrestlers that have ever done it and I get to do it now on weekly TV and I get to really test myself in these waters. And recounted that over the last eight years, he has matured and now understands the responsibility of being in AEW. When he was asked about a third match with Kenny Omega, Osprey said he'd also like to do it, but would also like to wrestle Andrade El Idolo and Miro. He also mentioned MJF and Jay White as opponents he'd like to face. I'm here for a reason, man. I'm here to go straight to the top. Like, and I, I want MJF, like, I, I want, I want that responsibility of being in the ring with him and, like, testing myself because, like, for all this time, man, I've been on this side of the fence and I've seen, like, I, do you know what, like, we'd always say, like, when we watch it, Ed, when we watch him come out, it was like, oh, he's not ready for the main event, I went, now nah, and watch, and he did it, no, nah, no, he's not, he's not a good champion enough, I went, now nah, no, nah, and watch, and he did it. I, I keep saying it, man, like, I, I love watching MJF, I, I, I like the idea, but, I want to see what he says his catchphrase. I want him to look me in the <laughs> eye, bruv. Julia Hart is the new TBS champion. Julia pinned Sky Blue in a triple threat match, also involving former champion Chris Statlander at Saturday's AEW Full Gear pay-per-view to win the TBS title, her first championship win in AEW. Chris Statlander hit Sky Blue with her Saturday Night Fever finisher, but Julia Hart threw Statlander aside and stole the pin to win the title. Julia Hart has won 14 out of 15 AEW matches in 2023, with her only defeat coming at the hands of Statlander in a TBS title bout last month. Statlander's first reign with the TBS title comes to an end after 174 days and 14 successful defenses. Julia becomes just the third ever TBS champion since the title was established in January 2022, joining Statlander and Jade Cargill. Julia Hart said she's on cloud nine and very proud of herself. 
She mentioned that her recent matches with Willow Nightingale and Sky Blue have really elevated her. Regarding her quick rise in pro wrestling, Julia said she had about five matches on the independent scene before wrestling on AEW television. So all of her growth has been on AEW television. She said she couldn't believe she's doing this at this point in her career. She was negative regarding her previous cheerleading gimmick prior to joining the House of Black, saying she wasn't confident about doing it. Yeah, I think uh, being with the cheer gimmick, it was really hard to even take myself seriously and I wasn't confident and I've always felt just like the little guy. I still am the little guy and I'm still learning every week and every time I'm in the ring and I love everybody's critiques. I really appreciate it. So, I mean, well, sorry. What was your what was the question? Sorry. Have you had any challenges? Maybe. Oh yeah, I remember coming to the back after my matches as a cheerleader, and people would just be like, "You'll get it eventually. Like it's okay." And I'm like, "Oh God, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not confident in myself. I don't know what's happening." So, I think it was just finding my darker side to really take it out of me. So now I come back from my matches, and people are like. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> You're figuring something out. I'm like, oh, thank God I'm doing something right now because it was a long path to find me doing something right. So. Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega have earned a future AEW tag team title match. At Saturday's Full Gear, the Golden Jets, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega defeated the Young Bucks after Omega hit the one-winged angel on Matt Jackson. As a result, Jericho and Omega won a future AEW tag team title match at any time they want, something that the Young Bucks had earned at Wrestle Dream last month. Regarding an injury to his arm, Jericho said that he got 10 stitches. And he also spoke about Will Ospreay signing with the company saying that Osprey has had one of the greatest career years ever. Uh, first of all, I'm really glad that Will signed with us. I was kind of hoping that he was going to. We've been talking about it for, for a while. I talked to Will on the phone about it maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago maybe. Um, I think the Wimbledon match we had was one of my favorites of the year. I think it was one of the best matches on the show, if not the best match. And that's what Will does. You know, he has, I think this is one of the greatest career years for any professional wrestler ever. The thing I like about Will that he's just tapping into that we kind of got into before our matches is character. He's got a character that's very believable. And I think that's something he's really going to get to focus on here at AEW that you don't really get a chance to in New Japan because of the communication gap. So um, I think this is the right place for him. Uh, I think we know what to do with Will Ospreay. I think there's a lot of huge matches he can have here. Uh, and to do the style that he wants to do for as long as he can do it. To me, he's one of the most valuable players uh, in the world and, and, and one of the biggest gets that, that AEW could, could, could acquire, so I'm really excited about that. Ricky Starks and Big Bill also spoke to the media, and they mentioned they had only met each other recently. Starks emphasized that they are not tag team wrestlers, they are singles wrestlers that are tag team champions. Big Bill opened up about his previous issues with sobriety. He said that he thought he was just going to keep living a miserable existence. He credited pro wrestling with helping him become sober. He felt if he could get things together, he could make it back to the top of pro wrestling. Tony Khan noted that this was the first big title that Big Bill has held in any company. Yeah, I mean, uh, in 2018, 2019, I was uh, at the lowest point in my life. My addiction was in full force. Uh, I didn't leave my apartment. I was drinking all day from sunup to sundown. And uh, I never thought that I'd be back in professional wrestling. Uh, I thought that I was just going to keep existing a miserable existence like I was, staring out my apartment window at the sun setting every day as I just drank myself to death. And, uh, you know, I guess the light bulb went off. And I think wrestling was a big part of how I got sober. You know, I. Uh, I always, my, number, my first loving life has always been professional wrestling from the time I was going to shows at Madison Square Garden as a very young kid. And um, I, I, you know, there came a moment where I, I actually believed if, if I got back on track, I could make it back into the world of professional wrestling and make it to the top of the world of professional wrestling. And I really believe that in my heart. I know a lot of people, they say things like, I believe I'm going to be the man or I believe I'm going to be the world champion. But you could tell when you look in their eyes, they don't actually believe it. I really believed it. I thought if I can get back on track, I am going to make it back to the top of professional wrestling. And now I'm AEW World Tag Team Champion, sitting at this table as a uh, one of the one of the top guys in uh, 
you know, AEW, and I, I would say that that's the top of the professional wrestling world, so I, I did exactly what I thought I would do. Orange Cassidy said that beating John Moxley was one of his biggest accomplishments, calling Moxley one of the greatest wrestlers ever. Uh, we all know it's not a secret that John Moxley is one of the best professional wrestlers in the world. Uh, he'll go down as one of the best professional wrestlers ever, um, and he is tough. His skull hurts when I punch it. Um, <laughs> There was a time where John Moxley, you know, put the company on his shoulders and he and he carried it through some tough times. And there is so much respect I have for John Moxley. And um, I knew that this this mountain of John Moxley that I had to climb would be very, very, very difficult. And uh, I am I, I I feel very grateful that I had the opportunity to fight him again. And I also feel very, very grateful that I that I beat him um, because it, it is. It's something that I never thought possible. On to Tony Khan's media scrum portion, a lot of news came out of that. At the start of the media scrum, Tony noted that the pay-per-view numbers were currently trending higher than last month's Wrestle Dream event. He reiterated the rules for the upcoming Continental Classic Tournament. The scoring system will be three points for a win, one point for a draw. He compared it to European football. Tony said that the winner of this tournament will unify three different titles the Ring of Honor World Championship, the New Japan Strong Openweight title, and the AEW Continental title. Tony called it a Triple Crown Championship, comparing it to All Japan's Triple Crown title. At the same time, he said that he is not creating the new championships, but is consolidating three titles. Regarding Ronda Rousey, Tony Khan said she is not signed, but thought based on the Wrestling Revolver show, it would be great to have a match and build some interest for Ring of Honor. He said he would love to have her back sometime. Not signed, but we had a great uh, conversation. It came about, of course, there was some unfinished business. They had that match, and I thought it would be great for our fans to uh, settle it in the ring. And uh, at the Wrestling Revolver show, they had the tag match, and to be honest, uh, I'd spoken to them, and I thought it would be great to have a match and build some interest, and then uh, have the story come back to Ring of Honor, where Athena is the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. Billy Starks is her minion. There's a lot of interest in that. They have uh, a great chemistry uh, for people who don't watch ROH every week. There's some really exciting things happening there. And Athena's reign as the Women's World Champion of ROH and Billy Starks as her minion. It's uh, some really entertaining stuff. And I thought that it would be great to see that tag team against two of the horsewomen, two uh, being Marina and Ronda Rousey. And, Rhonda was happy to come here and she was great. The crowd was really excited to see her and uh, it was a great match. We'd love to have her back sometime. It was really fun being out here. She's a local, she lives at nearby and that uh, really helped make it possible. So anytime it's convenient, uh, you know, we'd love to have her back because she was tremendous. It was a great match. He also mentioned that the load time for next year's All In would be rushed due to Taylor Swift performing shows at Wembley Stadium around the same time. He said it would cost him more to rush the setup for the show. He also said that over 13,000 people were there for AEW Full Gear at the Kia Forum, a Full Gear attendance record. He was asked about Mercedes Monet, and he just clarified that he has had great conversations with her and would love to have her in AEW. Yeah, I, she was at AEW All In, and uh, it was great having her as a part of the show. Uh, I have a ton of respect for Mercedes Monet. We'd love to have her any time in AEW, and I think uh, you know she's had great experience also with our partner New Japan Pro Wrestling, and so she would be a, a great addition uh, to AEW anytime. And we'd always love to have her here. I have a ton of respect for her, and have had great conversations with her, and I think the world of her. Regarding Will Ospreay, he said that he had been talking to Ospreay since getting permission from New Japan Pro Wrestling and thought that it would be great if he could keep Ospreay in the New Japan AEW Spear, saying he got the deal done this week. He did not give a firm date on AEW Revolution, but put over Sting and called him one of the greatest people he's ever known or worked with. He also said that Brian Danielson's injury was not as serious as he thought, and Tony Khan said at one point that he thought Danielson would actually be out longer those are uh two people i really value a lot those are two people i wish would stay here in aw forever with sting that's a great question we talked about it and i had said i, I sting i would like for you to stay as long as possible here and we really value you 
and he said it's not really years at this point it's more like months and that was hard to hear but it made sense and I would have loved to have stretched it out as long as possible but I pointed out that he had debuted at Revolution 21 and that maybe three years would be a fitting conclusion to this whole thing and uh, you know he's amassed this great record and going in tonight they were 23 and L uh, and Dev Sting going uh, for three years to be chasing that final great moment and to have this great send off I thought that was really cool and he liked that a lot so when I said that he uh, really took to that idea and we went from there so at that point we started talking about revolution and when he went out and addressed the crowd in Houston and said that uh, it's going to be my last year and that revolution is the end that was uh, after we talked about it and kind of come up with based on how he was feeling that felt because like, he's feeling good I think he wants to go out on top and I think that's what we all want so uh, I'm glad he came to me and told me that and then about Brian Danielson it's funny because that was different it's also three years but it was three years by design because Brian also arrived and Brian also made his debut in 2021, Sting, Sting made his first appearance in 2020, but he had his first wrestling match at Revolution 2021. Brian made his first appearance here uh, at All Out 21. And when Brian came in, we had made an agreement that he was gonna wrestle for three years, and then he was gonna go home and be a dad. And it was like uh, one of those deals that sounds really good, but it's like you're watching the sand in the hourglass now. And for me personally, uh, as I look at it, we're getting closer and closer to the end of that three-year deal, and it's getting harder and harder for me. But think about the end. That's a wrap for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to give this video a like and subscribe to F4W Online for plenty more wrestling content.